And this, you know, this is really interesting too when it goes to some of the stuff that Graham Hancock is talking about mm. with ancient civilizations and some of this evidence of things like Gobekli Tepe, which is like 12,000 years ago, and even the pyramids in Egypt and some of these other these other things that we found around the world that we can't explain with we can't things that we could not construct today if we wanted to right and people you know you think it's like some high technology you know what sort of crazy technology did they have some enormous scale pulleys or saws that could cut some of the hardest stones that exist on earth yeah, that yeah. we can't even do today mm. But like, if you think about it the way you're talking about it, is this high technology inside of us? Yeah, I mean, in in a way, it, it in a way it is. We are constructing these realities. So a brain is a brain is um, the fact that the brain can construct these realities, as I've said several times, is in itself confounding. It's remarkable. It suggests that there's there's, there's some ability there that we we weren't aware of we weren't aware of it suggests right. that i've often described this idea that we have this hyperdimensional heritage it's a world that's not so much alien but a world from which we have become alienated dmt grants us this brief but astonishing glimpse at this remarkable hyperdimensional heritage where does that heritage come from why is dmt so at home uh, in our brain um the brain uh, why is the brain able to shift so effortlessly and so efficiently into constructing this alternate reality model? Does it suggest right. that there is some distant relationship here? Maybe some ancestral function. Was DMT an ancestral neuromodulator in some way? Was it present at much higher concentrations in our brain in prehistory? We don't know. But that might explain you know, that perhaps there's been... Uh, some kind of degrading of the function of producing DMT in our brain over time. We become much more cemented as such in this consensus model of reality and more alienated from, more disconnected from this other reality. And perhaps there were, intelli uh, there were earlier humans, many tens of thousands of years ago, perhaps, or perhaps even closer than that, who were... Uh, um, who were more connected to this other domain mm. uh, and were able to access it, whether through using exogenous DMT from right. plants or whatever, or perhaps more likely uh, uh, from altered neurochemistry. So they're ape so at times, uh, DMT levels in their brain were rising. Their endogenous DMT was, was higher. Their endogenous DMT was higher. And, and I wrote a paper back in 2013 where I suggested that perhaps ancient dream function um, was related to DMT. So you can imagine DMT levels having a kind of diurnal cycle. So they, they drop down during the day when we're interacting with the normal waking world, the consensus world, the environment, when we need to be very, very aware of our environment. When we're asleep and we're dreaming, we, this is when DMT levels rise and allows us to access in the dream state this alternate reality. So these would be ancient DMT dreams, if you like. So we would live kind of parallel lives Lives, both in this world and at night, we would be interacting with this alternate reality and perhaps receiving information that we could use then in doing these kind of amazing structures and amazing kind of technologies that they had in those days. That's a possibility. I'm not saying it's true, uh, but it's an idea. And since we've lost that function, um, we've become alienated from that world. And this is also, perhaps why when people take DMT, there is this profound sense of deja vu and familiarity. Deja vu. You really get this sense that this is the most fucking bizarre experience I couldn't possibly have imagined. And yet, at the same time, it is intensely familiar. I know this place. I've been here. Really? They welcome you back. You know, the lights start flashing. The bells are ringing. There's your name literally in light. He's returned. We haven't seen you for so long. Um, Terence McKenna used to say, right? It was kind of like that. There's, 
so many people describe that uh, of being welcomed home in a sense, like we've been away for so, so very long. And that would make sense if there was some much deeper relationship with that reality in our ancestral past, and that some of that neural architecture, that those inherited neural structures I was talking about earlier, have been Mm, degraded but still carried with us and we kind of reactivating this ancestral function by consuming exogenous DMT rather than relying on endogenous DMT but you're going back to those same kind of worlds that these ancient humans would have been experiencing using perhaps endogenous DMT levels right that's a cool idea right it is a great idea mm. I mean it does make sense too especially with yeah. like the evidence of like the younger the younger dryas cataclysms that came and wiped out civilization and there was a couple proto hominids that survived possibly and they were much more primal and and we sort of evolved like we had to sort of like reset yeah. and maybe we didn't we didn't go in the right direction got it yeah so we became more cemented in our consensus model of reality and we completely lost contact with that but mm -hmm. we're rediscovering it now and what's interesting is we're rediscovering at a time when we are Perhaps we needed time away to develop ourselves, to develop our, to become more cognitively and technologically sophisticated. So now we know more, perhaps, about what to do. We've rediscovered this space um, just when we are, uh, I mean, 1956, right? So this isn't that long ago, just as we were becoming a really clearly technological uh, species, right? We are at the stage in our in our advancement where we're beginning to think about other intelligences right. elsewhere. Right. That's the time DMT comes back. It's rediscovered. And we, we're starting to learn to use it and go back into reconnect ourselves from uh, reconnect ourselves to this other domain, but with much better cognitive and technological tools at our disposal. So I see DMTX as being part of that rediscovery and redevelopment of DMT as this technology for uh, reacquainting and reconnecting with this domain, with the intelligences that are resonant within it. <laughs>